Hello, and welcome to Museum Monday. My name is Heidi Taylor Caudill, and I'm the curator of the Audubon Museum at John James Audubon State Park in Henderson, Kentucky. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Audubon Museum's original double elephant folio set of John James Audubon's Birds of America, one of the rarest and most beautiful books ever published. Our copy is one of the 120 complete sets known to exist today. We'll talk briefly about the publication history of the Double Elephant Folio edition, then we'll delve into the provenance of our set, identifying the original subscriber and tracing the history of ownership from that person to our museum. And finally, we'll look at changes in the way our museum has displayed the books since they were donated to us in the 1960s. So let's start with the idea behind the publication of the Birds of America. In 1820, John James Audubon was at one of the lowest points in his life. His businesses in Henderson, Kentucky had failed, his family had lost almost everything, and he had spent a brief time in jail before declaring bankruptcy. It was at this time that Audubon made a bold choice. He decided to leave his wife and sons behind in Cincinnati, Ohio, and follow the birds to Louisiana. There he would study them and paint their likenesses. His goal was to publish the drawings and become prosperous so that the family could reunite and live happily. Audubon's wife, Lucy, and their sons eventually joined him in Louisiana. She worked as a teacher and governess while he studied and painted birds. Lucy believed in Audubon's art and encouraged him to follow his dream. After attempting to find an engraver for his drawings in Philadelphia and New York, Audubon resolved to travel to Europe to search for an engraver who could reproduce his work. He and Lucy worked for two years to save up the money to fund the trip. In the summer of 1826, Audubon sailed to Liverpool, England. He took with him his paintings, $2,000, and letters of introduction. He also had his charm, good looks, and his lifelike, life-size paintings of the birds of America. Within a matter of weeks, Audubon was written up in newspapers and magazines. He was introduced to scientists, naturalists, and members of the aristocracy. He was also introduced to engraver William Holm Lazars. Seeing Audubon's paintings, Lazars exclaimed, My God, I've never seen anything like these before. He asked to be allowed to engrave Audubon's work. Audubon and Lazars chose the wild turkey as the first plate of the Birds of America to introduce the folio volumes and illustrate the necessity of the large format. All of Audubon's paintings were life-size and were printed on what is called double elephant paper. That's the printer's term for the 28-inch by 39-inch paper. If you look closely at the turkey engraving in the lower uh, right-hand corner, you'll see that it is made up of thousands of lines describing the shape and texture of the turkey feathers and the wild cane in the background. Each line was cut into a copper plate. Ink was applied to the plate and then wiped away, leaving only the ink in the lines. This plate was then used to print the black line image of the turkey in the paper. Colors were then applied by hand. Audubon calculated the Birds of America project would take 14 years to complete, and he would have to sell 200 copies to break even. After that, it would be pure profit, and if he could sell 300 sets, he and his family would live comfortably for the rest of their lives. The sets sold for $1,000, or about fifteen to 25000 today. If you were a subscriber, every few months, Audubon or one of his agents would knock on your door and hand you five prints. After the first ten plates were done, Lazar's staff went on strike. Audubon moved operations to London and chose Robert Havel Jr. as his new engraver. After twelve years, Audubon sold approximately 185 complete sets. This was 15 short of the break-even number. In fact, he couldn't pay his final printing bill to Havel for almost a year. However, Audubon was now world famous. 
and today his double elephant folio edition of the Birds of America is considered one of the most important works in natural history and book illustration. So where did the Audubon Museum set come from? We can trace the ownership history, or provenance, back to the original subscriber, Thomas Walker of Killing Beck Hall, near Leeds, England. Walker was an early subscriber to the Birds of America project. Audubon met Walker during a canvassing trip to Edinburgh, York, and the Midlands. This took place while his first engraver, Lazars, was producing the first 10 prints. Walker collected all 435 prints and bound them into a set of four books. The set has remained intact since the original purchase, and this edition holds 10 Lazar's plates. Plate 6, uh, the female turkey and young, was colored by Robert Havel. Plates 7 to 10 were printed and colored by Havel. The books weigh about 50 pounds each and are around three feet tall when held upright. There are four volumes in our set containing 435 prints. The first three volumes contain 100 prints each. The fourth volume contains 135 prints. The Walker family kept the set until 1920 when Audubon scholar Dr. Robert Cushman Murphy of the American Museum of Natural History bought it. In 1935, Dr. Murphy sold the books to amateur ornithologist Marcia Brady Tucker. She later donated the folios to the Audubon Museum in Henderson, Kentucky in 1965. Our set of the double elephant folios have been on display to museum visitors for over 50 years. The books help us to tell the story behind the Birds of America and the fulfillment of Audubon's dream. Here are a few photos showing changes in how the folios have been displayed since the 1960s. Several years ago, we took steps to better preserve and more safely display the folios. In 2016, the Audubon Museum received a grant for $1,000 from the Kentucky Local History Trust Fund. Combined with funding from the Friends of Audubon, we were able to order a custom plexiglass display mount so that we could better exhibit the folios. The new display mount has allowed us to keep one folio on view at all times uh, while helping prevent uh, damage to that book. And once a month, uh, we turn the pages of the book on display so that our visitors can see a new image. Before we close, uh, we want to highlight the Kentucky Local History Trust Fund. Uh, this fund was very important to us in being able to continue sharing the double elephant folios with our visitors. Uh, encourage your friends and family uh, to donate to the Kentucky Local History Trust Fund if you live in Kentucky. Grants uh, support projects such as artifact conservation, digitization of collections, strategic planning, exhibits, educational programs, and more. All you have to do uh, to donate to the fund is check the box on your Kentucky income tax return uh, in order to designate a portion of your refund uh, to the trust fund, and you can indicate exactly how much you want to give. Uh, the donations collectively go into a grant pool, and each fall, history organizations in Kentucky uh, apply for grant funding. The Kentucky Historical Society administers uh, the process of distributing the grants. For more information, visit history.ky.gov slash get involved slash support local history. And you can see that address uh, below the graphic. Museum Monday videos are researched, produced, and narrated by me, Heidi Taylor Caudill, curator of the Audubon Museum at John James Audubon State Park in Henderson, Kentucky. Check out our bonus video on paper marbling and the Audubon Museum's double elephant folio. And also, please consider becoming a subscriber to our YouTube channel. 
and look for the uh, John James Audubon State Park pages on social media. Thanks for watching.